I'm Lynn Belisle in my studio and I want to give you a little preview of some of the things we'll do in the face shard workshop. Our ultimate goal will be to be making these little pins right here and not only are they nice in decorative frames but they're very uh, useful too as ornaments. Each one of them is attached on the back with a magnet like this so that you can take them off the frame detach the magnet and then you can just put them on your shirt or a scarf and there's even a little straw in the back that lets you put a cord through it if you want to make it for a necklace but the thing we start off with is the face itself and this is what makes it special this is why they're called face shard pins so after we get the pin off we can then look at the, the assortment of faces we have here now these are all made from molds from old sculpture gardens and graveyards, just the way I do my larger ones for the scent shards. These are different kinds of clay. These are terracotta, these are buff, which is an ivory, and then the other ones are white. It's kind of hard to tell the difference between the buff and the white, but you'll see as we start putting the finish on that you really can see the difference. For example, one of the things I use on my pens is something called walnut oil and it's extracted from walnut hulls and it's a permanent ink um, that really gives an aged finish to any kinds of clay. So I'm going to show you what it looks like on three different clay bodies first. This one happens to be terracotta. So I'm going to take a, a buff one, a white one, and a terracotta one and I work on a towel because this can get pretty messy. I'm going to spray lightly on each one of these. And just move along. Now you may want to spray both sides and let it seek into the creases. What you're trying to do is create a three-dimensional effect. And then right away you want to take another washcloth or rag and wipe off the finish so that you get the three-dimensional effect of aging. And that was on the terracotta. This was on the buff and this was on the white. So you can see that you're going to get different effects depending on the kind of clay. Now if that's too dark for you, you can take some water and spray on it and then wipe it again. You'll see the difference already. And off it comes. And now it looks a little more like aged ivory. This is a really interesting one. This is a mixture, a, my secret mi mixture of walnut ink and other ingredients that make a blue finish. And now look at the way it affects these three clay bodies. On this one, it's a blue-green. On the terracotta, it goes gray. And on the buff one, it goes to almost a verdigris green. So let me wipe these off and show you how really amazing that particular walnut ink is affected. Uh, on the clay body. Now if you want more of a vertigris effect <clears throat> you can also take the terracotta on the buff clay and put it on in a second layer and then wipe off, wipe off as much as you want. So there, there are kind of an infinite number of finishes you can put on these little things before you even start putting the paper on them. Let's do one more pass on this one and now this is kind of the effect I like. This looks like an aged piece of copper this one it didn't do much for. I really like the terracotta on this one. And this one is a little bright, so we'd probably take it down. But now, after we've done this, we select the one we want to continue with. And in this case, I think I'm going to work with this one. And we'll start talking about paper and how to actually put these little guys together. When we um, looked at the faces, I had decided that I was going to use this one. And, you know, as, as people do on further reflection, after letting these dry, I kind of like this one. I think it speaks more to me. This is also a very nice one, too. Um, but I think I'll work with this one and see what we come up with. It's a little bit larger than I normally use for my pen shards. This is the size of the pen shards. It's two and a half by three. And I find that if I limit myself to this size, whether it's a little larger or a little smaller, it still makes a nice size uh, to wear. And it doesn't get too heavy. That's, that's the trick. Because these will be fa uh, fastened with magnets. And you don't want them to either pull a sweater down or 
or droop a scarf or whatever. But the first thing we're going to start out with is um, the handmade paper. And I collect all kinds of paper. Um, this is a particular favorite. It's a handmade paper that my, my uh, former studio mate made, and I usually use this for the first layer, kind of a background layer, and this tears pretty easily. And actually, it can be recolored. So what I'll do is tear this and then position the face to see which way it looks the best. That's not bad at all. It's a little bit long. What I think I'll do on this particular one is to put it on kind of in the center like that. But I'm not going to leave the back, back black background showing a whole lot. I want to add some other colors to it. Now one thing you want to consider is not making everything match. I could go with all blues. I could take some of this blue and some of this green and put them together with the black. And while they match and they coordinate, it's almost too samey, almost too much. So what I think I'll do instead is go with the complement of the, um, the turquoise blue, which is orange, kind of a burnt orange. And I'd probably choose this color to set it off with the black. And then when it came to doing beads, I might go with orange and turquoise beads. So it's a little bit of a, of a cliche to use orange and turquoise, but I also think that there's a reason for cliches that you can really put together some very pretty compositions. So continuing with this idea, I would look for some more oranges, maybe even a copper. Here's a pretty copper with a little silver in it. So we're picking up the silver here. And just go through and tear off little scraps of paper, not really trying to organize them yet, but just getting ideas about how they'll come together. So at this point, I'm going to go over to my table that has the hot glue gun and glue a few of these on and then I'll bring them back and we'll, po we'll poke some holes in there to start stringing some beads on. Before I take this over to hot glue it, I did not want to forget to show you about putting in the fine thread that you'll use for the beads. Uh, this is kind of optional at this point. You can always add it later and if the piece doesn't have holes in it, like this one, what you'll do is put a strip underneath and then punch holes in that to hang it down. But if it does have holes, you can just put it directly in the clay. And this will be done before you hot glue it, and that way it'll be there and ready for your beads. If you forget this part, it's no tragedy. You can always come back and punch them in later. Okay, it may not seem like we've done very much, but actually, thinking about it is, is most of the process. And I did find this really neat ammonite bead, which looks like that, that I'm going to attach to the side of the face. So I poked a hole in the back and I've run a, a strand through the ammonite, which is like a, I think it's a fossilized shell. And I'll poke another hole using a, actually I use a pottery needle here. And I can just take the other end of the string and tie it through. And once it's through, we can tie it in a knot and then secure it to the back that way. So it just goes through. You kind of have to play with some of this stuff. It gets a little fiddly sometimes. But you ought to be able to see it come through. And sometimes it's hidden by another layer, which I think is the case here. There it goes. And there's the other end. So we're going to just secure this here. And then after we've gotten this in, it's kind of a main focal piece. We'll do some adjusting with it to get it straight. And then we'll come back in just a second and show the progress once this is on about the other beads that are going to be accent beads. This is um, what we're, where we are right now. I've picked up some beads. I've attached the ammonite. I put some turquoise and a little round glass bead here with a copper kind of finishing bead. Um, I also used an interesting paper crimper. We used to use paint tube crimpers, but they make paper crimpers to crimp that copper. And finally, I put an additional string um, on the side of the face here that had a hole, and I punched right through the paper. You can see the construction on the back of it, and this will ultimately be covered up. If this were for real, I would probably, and will, finish it up and um, play with it another 30 to 45 minutes. And what I like to do is just walk away from it, sometimes overnight. But uh, for right now, we'll pretend that this is finished, and this is the size of card that I use. I use archival mat board for the backing. It's lightweight and very strong, and I always cut it to two and a half by three inches, even though that can vary. So this would then get hot glued to the backing, and I may trim around it. You can even punch some more holes in the backing if you want and put more strings on. 
um, you kind of don't want to overdo it. I um, had a little feather here that I was considering, but it was just too much of a, again, a cliche. I had this orange bead that I thought originally would work, but it was too bright, and it, it um, didn't work with the, um, the kind of subtlety of the pen. And also I had this little lampwork bead, which, who knows, I may go ahead and stick back on because I really like it. But let us say that we are finished with this, and then the next thing we're going to do is on the back where it's nice and clean, We'll hot glue our magnet on, and I will give you sources for these. So you clip it on like this and hot glue it and make sure that it's very, very secure. The last thing we're going to do is to take on the back, right above the magnet, a soda straw, and we're going to cut off about two inches of it. Don't use one of those stripedy orange and blue things. See if you can get a clear one, and you can even wrap it in rice paper if you want to disguise it. And then where the magnet goes on the back, you're going to put the straw right up here as kind of a little channel to put a cord. So this is our little shard pin on the way to completion. I hope you enjoyed the process and um, I'll send you a picture of it when it's finished. Thank you very much.